Welcome back to Management Decision Tools. In this segment, we are going to continue our discussion to compare between two queue systems having K servers each. And we, because K is expected to be larger than two and maybe uh, quite a bit larger than two, we have the means of configuring them differently. More specifically, do we configure them as a single queue of K servers MMK, or do we configure them as K queue systems, each with one server? Okay, and the way it goes is that uh, just now in the discussion of cost, economic analysis of queue systems, we were concerned about having the least number of servers in our queue system, one queue system. And because, of course, we know intuitively or otherwise that uh, as we increase K, the number of servers, we'll pay more money. And it doesn't make sense if it's not going to uh, improve in some sense. Uh, so we use the total cost as a means of objective function, right, to kind of gauge for us what is the best number of servers to deploy. In this segment, however, we are committed to deploy K servers. The question is, how do we run it? Is it going to be one queue system of K servers or is it going to be K systems of one server? Is it the same? Is it, does it not matter or does it matter? And that is what we seek uh, to find out. Or does it matter only in certain cases and not matter in other cases or what, right? So just for curiosity and also of importance, uh, we like to find out what is the answer to this question. And graphically, it will look something like this. Uh, upstairs here, one queue system or one configuration is to have three servers right, arranged in three queue systems. So we have three waiting lines and uh, each is kind of self-contained. Okay. Now, uh, and of course, if we say that the server has mu uh, is able to clear mu customers per hour, then S123, they are all identical. They all have mu uh, service rates. And if we reconfigure the servers into MMK, so the there's only one queue and um, customers at the front of the queue, right, will be served by any available server. And of course, they are also still having, to be fair, having uh, mu service rates, okay, no no more and no less. And uh, we are being fair because we have three servers each. Uh, the only question is which is better, does it matter? Now, let's also be fair. Incoming customers, they are both arriving at an average rate of Lambda and they are following MMK, right, MM3 here. So both are Poisson distributed. And our servers are also servicing requests uh, that kind of distribute in the sense of Poisson service rates. So in the case of bank, it can be that the customers come in with a transaction request that is kind of random because they sometimes withdraw money, sometimes deposit money, sometimes foreign exchange currency. But no matter what, the timings are such that they will be exponentially distributed. Service times will be exponentially distributed to implement the second M. Um, in the grocery case, grocery examples such as supermarkets, and we tend to see a lot of examples of, of uh, K times MM1 in the, in the first case, right? So configuration A and B. Yeah? Um, most supermarkets are configured this way with multiple queues. Uh, to be honest, I can't figure out why. Um, it, it seems to be that if I'm supermarket, I will do it this way, right? So, um, and it's quite international. I did check with my international exchange students before the COVID uh, safe distancing. And uh, almost always I will hear that uh, there are examples from whichever country they're from, Europe or Asia, or uh, even as far away as, uh, yeah, Europe. And uh, those examples are always, always uh, about K times MM1. Occasionally, it will be MMK, but by and large, almost always K times MM1. Okay, so what are some of the examples of K times MM1? Supermarket, yes. 
um, locally in Singapore, for example, the the uh, if you are driving from Singapore towards Malaysia at the Woodlands checkpoint, uh, far far away from the actual checkpoint, like kilometers away, you be you be kind of forced, uh, to decide on which lane you want to wait. wait. So once you decide to go into lane three, for example, you must just move along because by the size for security reasons you cannot u-turn you cannot turn away you cannot cross lanes and so on okay you must only follow the queue that you have chosen starting from far far away so that is uh one example when k times mm1 will mimic the the real life situation well um i was told in certain airports um uh, you know those immigration clearance queues same thing from far away you will pick lines but my experience is in certain airports uh, it is different it is configured more like uh, this style right so so mmk style and yet in other cases there'll be like locals and foreigners and then uh, uh, the locals once you enter the locals queue uh, you will be further branched into this mmk for locals and for foreigners there'll be mmk for foreigners so that's yet another configuration so it gets complicated then and we can use simulation to decide but that's not our question here our question here is important and it's quite frequently encountered so let's not get that far first we're still talking about examples of k times mm1 k times mm1 so by talking about examples we get a feel that it's not as rare as it sounds uh, in fact it's quite common in fact it's intentional right Q system owners must decide which one why did they end up doing that uh, well, we see some examples for MMK. What are some examples for MMK? Um, I noticed that uh, in locally in Singapore, uh, whenever you have a, a point with the ATM machines, right? Uh, sometimes there's only one, then, then of course it's one server. But there are points or positions and locations where the bank had two or even three ATM machines side by side. And things get interesting. So these days, these days, I noticed that the banks are basically drawing some yellow lines, uh, very short ones, like around uh, one person's space, right? Uh, in front of their one, two, three ATM machines. And then they draw some guide yellow lines, longer ones, uh, right here. To give you some social indication that, you know, people, please queue up this way. We are sharing. Right, so have a common queue, and when it's your turn, whichever is available, please take your, you know, uh, please please uh, get your service there. And of course, we are not looking at people service. To us, machines are the same, so we basically don't have a choice as to I want the left hand side one or the right hand side one, right? So so basically, they have, uh, configured, people their customers into a MMK system, and what I why I say interesting is because. Uh, some years ago, when I was still also teaching this, when I whenever I saw two or three ATM machines uh, being being you know located at one point, it's it's a uh, maybe it's some kind of uh, 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 habit. I would just check it out. What is the queue configurations that the uh, the bank or the owner is trying to tell the customers? And those days, like four or five years back, maybe. Uh, Yellow lines will be drawn in front of the queues like that, pretty long ones. And they are drawn in parallel, indicating that if you are customers trying to use my bank's ATM machines, uh, please try to line up. Choose one and then line up and stick to that, right? Because if you move around, unless there's no one around, but if there are people, then you might be frowned upon or even given a shouting, right? So, so it's a self-fulfilling kind of uh, K times or three times MM1. You notice that? Yeah, so that was way back. And these days, I notice banks are uh, shifting. Mostly, whenever there are two or three ATM machines, I will check it out. And they are all mostly like this. Interesting. And I like to think that perhaps some of my students earlier on graduated from this course, went back to their bank, get promoted to high positions, and then initiated the change from the earlier K times MM1 to MMK systems uh, because of our discussion here today. I don't know, that's my wishful thinking. So, which is which configuration is actually better? A or B? 
Um, and to answer that question, we strictly need to perform uh, more serious mathematical analysis, but we're not going to do that because that's not the aim of this course to delve deeply or even worry students at some point about the need to deal deeply into mathematics. Um, we need that, but our point here is to cleverly write on the shoulders of giant. We will just tap on mathematical uh, results and uh, make use of those results to make better business decisions. Okay, But we're not going to sweep it under the carpet as well. What we're going to do here is to perhaps uh, have a very uh, sort of maybe impactful uh, demonstration of why the MMK system always win 